I just needle casted from Harlan's world. And man, are my neurons tired. If you want to live forever, you're going to need to back that shit up. Because it's time for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest, not this week, to talk about the ever-expanding Geekiverse and to play a game with us. I'll be playing with myself tonight. That's right. Hey. You get to watch me play with myself. You're an industry <laughs> guest. You're okay. you- you're going to talk to yourself. You're gonna... right. It's going to be a lot of me talking to me. Now, Mike and I are just going to talk. Anyway, so we do our dance to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Hey, I thought we would shoot the sleeve tonight. What do you say? Yeah, we, yes, we're going to shoot the sleeve tonight. That's right. Um, and like I said, there's no guest this week, so no bio or, or links or any of that kind of crap tonight. It's just, just us morons uh, pontificating about things that are smarter than we are. So, uh, But before we get started, before we go too much uh, further into this show, uh, we have a dear friend of ours, good good buddy of ours that we, we hang out with at, at conventions and we talk to online, um, Mr. Scott Pond. And uh, Mr. Scott Pond, he probably wouldn't even like me calling him Mr. Scott Pond. <laughs> Pondy! <laughs> Pondy, our buddy, our buddy Scott. He's... um. He recently uh, uh, was diagnosed with cancer and has been very vocal and very uh, outspoken on his journey, his journey to healing. Um, They caught it early, so that's a really good thing. That's awesome. Um, His prognosis is very strong. Um, But... Needless to say, it's a scary fucking thing. It's really, it's it's scary. You know, I I can, I can only imagine. Um, But, uh, but we want to show our support. For Scott, a lot of people are doing. A lot of people in the community. Uh, this is like the writing, writing community, indie writer community, and, and Balticon community. And I don't even know how far this thing stretches out. You know, I mean, you could call it the Scott Sigler community in some ways. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so we just wanted to take a few seconds to to, to shout out our support to Scott. And uh, you know, hey buddy, keep it keep it going. Uh, we are wearing tonight. We are wearing designs. There's mine. Here's Mike's. Hold on. Wait. 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 There's Mike's. These are designs done by Scott Pond. You you can get these at uh, scottsigler.com. These are t-shirts from the uh, GFL uh, storyline. He's got a bunch of merchandise for that. Uh, if you've never heard of Scott Sigler or the uh, or the GFL, uh, do yourself a favor and go buy some of those books and the swag. Um, you know, help help out Scott make make his living and 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 Scott make his living. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so anyway, I just want to say, you know, hashtag Pondy Strong, hashtag Team Pondy, and hashtag Fuck, fuck Cancer. Cancer. That's exactly. right. That's right. So, uh, so anyway, so anyway, that's that's. Oh, uh, why did the chicken? I'm, I'm look right up at the, at the. Uh, oh no, it's not chicken scissors. Never mind. I don't know. <laughs> it's not chicken. What are you talking? <laughs> it's never mind. Never mind. I'm just stupid. Okay. I, I, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. All right. Uh, yeah, those are things from from the show we're going to be talking about tonight. Altered Carbon, the show, and the yes. book. Well, those are images from the show, but it you know yes. it's a book as well. Um, so Mike, this is Mike's show in a lot of ways. He, uh, I wasn't going to do a show tonight only because I've been very very busy. I got two conventions coming up. I got yes. a, oh, a ton of prep work to do for them, uh, and that's what I've been doing all weekend. And I just I and and for the past couple of weeks. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff in development that we're doing. I got you know my Kickstarter that I'm working on, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I wasn't going to have a guest. I was going to say you know what we can just skip a night. It's fine because we're going to be back on next Monday. Uh, we'll probably record an episode. So during Total Con, uh, a crossover episode with uh, Wargaming Recon. Um, so, so it's not like there's a, a, a you know, it's you know a loss of material. There'll be plenty of material. But Mike was like, nope, nope, let's do a show tonight. Nope. So I, was like, I believe right. I believe in doing it. And uh, I was <laughs> contrary to what you wish I would do every week, which you know I'm trying to get a little bit better at it. But uh, yes, I I kind of. Came up with a premise and uh, or a discussion for tonight, and that would be mainly talking about altered carbon, and mm-hmm. um, uh, not that I want to spoil it for anyone. I'm halfway through the series. Pete went through the whole series already. You went through all ten episodes. I'm I just finished episode five tonight, um, and what I wanted to do is have a discussion um, more along the lines of sort of a. Uh, take take the series and all of the tech and all of the um, kind of show pl- uh, 
plot and premise and overlay that on what we've known about and sort of as as role players what we've played uh with cyberpunk for these many years and i just wanted to kind of see like what did we what do we like what um what technology we remember from cyberpunk what new things what like you know not you know mike pondsmith was an amazing sort of future seer you know for for all the things that he was able to put into it like and it all i think he almost has had this sleeve thing down but not to this point and and so i, I but i also want to talk about how this will affect society so it's going to be more of a meta analysis i guess um so that we do not spoil it for people it is rather new so that's why i didn't want to have a deep dive in the actual series but i wanted to talk about it a little bit uh, and i don't know pete maybe if you wanted to just sort of talk about and uh, well i'll jump into about just sort of i guess the general like what you will either know from the teasers uh, so people know if they haven't heard of altered carbon, if they've been under a, an altered rock. Right. Well, I, I will say this N Netflix did kind of screw up. All right. So, uh, and it's possible there are people who haven't heard of altered carbon or didn't watch it. Cause you know, th there's a promotion machine that goes on that, that gets people to watch shows. Uh, Netflix is usually very, very good about it. It's kind of how stranger things just popped out of nowhere, but then all of a sudden everybody had seen it. Um, they, they kind of all right. So they released Altered Carbon, and then I can't remember how soon it was. A couple days, maybe a weekend later, uh, they put up um, uh, that uh, the Clover Cloverfield effect, Clo yeah. Cloverfield paradox. Yes, and it kind of uh, they kind of. Uh, pardon my French mama marsh, but they kind of stepped on their own dick on that one because they, <laughs> they no, they released this. I mean, they, something my mom hasn't heard before. They spent all of this money on altered carbon. It may be one yeah. of the, the highest budgeted TV yeah. series of all time. Uh, they, they, I mean, they, they let out, you know, all, they took out all the stops and then, you know, the show just gets a start and then they dump all this promotion and money into the Cloverfield effects, which is another sci-fi thing right and they they almost overshadowed all the promotion for altered carbon mm -hmm. with the cloverfield effect or paradox sorry it's like you're saying effect of the cloverfield paradox um and so so people may have may may have missed uh the whole altered carbon thing now it's been a book for some time it's been a book for, for i don't even know how long it's been around but it's been around a, a while it's been sort of on my watch list for a long time uh, I kept thinking about you know reading it because I was like oh another cyberpunk book, and the funny thing is is it's it's like you said it's cyberpunk but it's not I mean but it's not at the same time I mean it is and it isn't mm -hmm. and and we'll get into that um, but but yeah we're not gonna like deep dive on like like uh, secrets and, and you know plot mm -hmm. twists and shit like that we're not gonna talk about you know things we're not gonna reveal things that are important to the story uh, some of the stuff you may not know and you'll find out but it, it's I promise you i i will try my best to keep it to things that don't that will not change the story or break any surprises for you you know i mean i'll throw one thing out there right right now um and this is completely has will not ruin the story for you at all there's martian technology in this so there's there was technology and people living on mars at some point uh, but it has nothing to do with the storyline other than mm -hmm. it's background noise. It's, you know, it's, yeah. it's just backstory and it yeah. doesn't affect the story, the characters or anything beyond this is where nope. this technology came from. That's it. Yeah. That And, you know, so that's the kind of stuff we're going to talk about. So um, if you really want absolutely zero spoilers, don't watch this episode right now. Come back and watch it later. Um, if you're fine with learning a few things about the show. Uh, but not finding out about the ending or any plot twists or any of that kind of shit. Uh, stick with us. It's going to be a good discussion. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, um, first of all, um, one of the differences in the show, and this is just sort of, again, background stuff, is that in the future, uh, as we all know in cyberpunk, um, society was ruled by the corporations or a corporatocracy. Yes. Uh, I think there was the you know the corporate wars. We have uh, Arasaka, and I can't remember the other one. Militech, no. Militech. and they pretty much have a corporate war. And, oh, there was uh, tons of them, but those yeah, are the two. Yeah, those yeah. are the twos with soldiers. And and so in in the in, in a lot of futuristic societies, that is tend to be tends to be how it is, right? I mean, like sort of corporations rise up and sort of uh, have a control on 
the the way society is um it's it's pretty much but that's pretty much throughout all yeah. of society you know we used to yeah. call it we used to call it uh you know, uh, royal houses, right? But the royal houses were really sort of like a big giant business, and they yeah. set up all their dukes and their barons and stuff as other corporations. It's just yeah. that they had one overseeing corporation, and That's then the church was another corporation. Mm. And I'm not trying to diminish church. I'm just saying, I'm talking about. I'm, I'm strictly talking about the economics of the time. So I'm not yeah. trying to say anything bad about church. I'm just trying to say, but they did drive money and they did make decisions True. based upon. True. They were like the corporation. Yeah. And what's cool about altered carbon is, uh, and I think it works in this uh, society is that uh, kind of it's a plutocracy and a, like an aristocracy. So. Uh, and I think which which is a little bit different because it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a business person, but you are you you can be rich. And usually that goes hand in hand. But mm -hmm. it is the richest people who a in this um, setting can afford to keep having their lives replenished and replaced, um, as well as they are you know able to have a, a an influence um, on how society is shaped. And I think one of the things that's interesting about that. When you talk about, well, there still has to be law, law enforcement, and the justice system. And I think that even from today, if we went into the future into a society like this, which, you know, it could slip, it could go that way, is that there's still going to be that layer of bureaucracy. And it's it's like, I remember there's a scene, and again, nothing, you know, giving it away, but it was like, hey, how did you get a permit to have a such and such live kill tournament or whatever? And it was like, you know, nobody can get it that quick. This is dated yesterday or something. You know what I mean? And it's like it's those kind of things. That's why that's how. And I always think bureaucracy always can, you know, uh, the upper elite can always kind of get past what is rules that we are supposed to be for the masses. You know, right. we're well, we're above such things, basically. And we just make it happen. If you, and I don't care what kind of ocracy it is. If you throw enough money at anything, then you can make it happen, which I don't you know. Right. Well, I think I think so. Basically, I mean, where this is coming from, where these people get this power, you know, it's not just money. It's also power and who, you know, and stuff influence. It's 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 your ability to influence yeah. things. Um, you know, it, it's it's very early on in the show. You find this out. It's the whole premise of the show. So I'm not giving anything away here. Right. People can live forever, basically. They can download their bodies. That's how the main character appears in the first episode. His body is is downloaded. It's pulled out of – it's literally pulled out of storage. He's been in storage for a long, long time. Well, not and his they, body. His, his, his mind is conscious. It called? It's called a uh, – uh, a stack in his yeah it's no called it's his in his stack no no well right. the stack is the storage device right right but your conscious is stored in the stack and they pull him they they pull him out from another world right from a whole nother planet uh and and pull him into this world pull him onto earth and uh you know and, and he does missions and stuff so the idea that you can you can save your consciousness and then put it in a new body they call it a sleeve um right. You can do this over and over and over again. So you effectively can live forever, right? You can you can live f for as long as you can keep transferring your body. So a lot of times when you have these these big businesses or you have these these social structures, um, the reason why they change over time and power shifts from place to place, most of the time it's because someone dies and it goes to their kids and their kids, you know. But but like let's say you know I die and I have three kids, right? And the, and it goes down and, and the, the stuff is divided amongst the three kids. And then one kid goes off and does this. One kid goes off and does that. Another kid does this. Maybe this one kills that one to take whatever, right? But you can see the power starts to split up. Power is divided. And then it goes in different directions and different, you know, different social groups are, are restructured. So they, they have to build their social group. Every generation has to be rebuilt. Um, but with these people, they keep their... You know, they keep their social groups, they keep their social circles, they are able to keep their money, and everything stays right. centralized for hundreds of years. So mm -hmm. that that power ladder that's built never comes apart. So they just get more powerful and more powerful. Uh, and it's another thing about information, you know, like as you grow up and you have to learn things, um, you know, it takes you like half your life to learn what you need to do with the rest of your life, right? Well, they don't have to do that. They learned it, and then they have all that information, and they can just build on it and refine it over centuries. So that's how they get so freaking powerful. Yeah, right. Now, 
just to keep in mind for anyone who's interested, this isn't just your your average uh, everyday man who is able to just live forever. It costs a lot of money yeah. in order to just plant your consciousness into a stack and get and, and then also get a sleeve. Now, uh, it seems like everyone can work one lifetime and right. put money away for like one. Right. And then you end up like uh, they were they, they were they, yeah, they, they were I was I was looking at a lot of featurettes and things about yeah. the show uh, doing some some background. And that well, was don't forget, I'm going to I'm going to be pulling some stuff from the book, too. Oh, OK. Yeah. Do okay, you do so, some, some stuff about the book? So um, so it's sort of like a human right that you get a stack. So when you're born, you mm -hmm. basically if you're in the not the Confederate. Oh, what the hell's the name of it? Whatever the or whatever the the protectorate. If you're in the protectorate, protectorate which is sort of yeah. like the Earth Empire, or whatever the hell you want to call it, right? You pretty much get one of these. You're given one of these. Everybody gets one as a kid. Everyone oh, they right. get a stack. Yes. And if you die, your you are your stack is stored for you. Like you don't have to pay for that. It get, you you get stored. Whether you ever come out is whether someone buys you whether you have the opportunity to have a new sleeve bought or you've you've arranged for one and like you're saying Mike you could that's I would imagine that's what people do you know they work their whole life and save up so they can buy another sleeve so that when yeah. they get old and they die they've got another right. sleeve to go into if they should choose to it's cuz some people don't now here's the interesting twist if you're murdered you automatically get a sleeve now you may yes. be an 8 year old girl who was murdered and they need to bring you back in order to question you however uh it, it, it's the state's money <laughs> as it right. is you know you're gonna get a, a state sleeve and yes. if that is an 80 year old man who you know they're able to find and you know put your you know your uh, stack in there then mm -hmm. you're you're an eight year old in in, yeah. in the body and so that's some contention in the movie there's some interesting yeah. uh moral dilemmas that that the uh not the movie but the the series kind of presents and then there's also another interesting dilemma that they present and that is for the religious for the catholics who uh believe in you know going to heaven or life after right. death and you you would be taking away that and you would be basically I guess it would be sacrilegious to do that. And mm -hmm. there was this proposition, this legal proposition for mm -hmm. that to not happen if you're religious and you 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 code yourself a certain way and right. and that play that can play into the plot as well. So um, it was, it was basically things, yeah. it's basically a law to protect people from forcible re sleeving. In other words, right. if you die, they have to let you die. They cannot they cannot put you into another body by law because you could say, look, right. I'm a Catholic. I do not. It's a it's a DNR, basically, you know, and because because otherwise the police have the right to forcibly jam you into a body so they can question you about a crime. And in the in the show, it's the Catholics. It, it could be. I'm sure there's plenty of religious organizations, but that's one they talked about in the book um, and in the show. Uh, you know, the, the Catholics don't want that. They do not want to be brought back into these bodies to be questioned for any reason. Once they're gone, they're gone. My mom said, oh, I got an old sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mom, Instead of you, gotta, you have an old tattered, soul. You know, you have an old sleeve. Tattered old sleeve. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> got some miles on that sleeve, Mama Marsh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that sleeve's been rode hard and put up wet. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Hey, that's my mother. I know. That's what I'm saying. Easy. <laughs> All right, so, so so this brings up this brings up. I mean, it brings up so many things. We we could do like a fucking whole series on this, um, but but let let's talk uh, about. All right, so you have you have on your list here. You have sleeves and stacks and clothes. Now, what did you mean by clones versus sleeves and stacks? Right. Well, you know, I I'm picturing I sleeve that... stacks. Can I come back in a sleeve stack? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, guy. <laughs> oh God! As soon as you said that, you started siloing a little bit. I don't know oh, what's going sorry. on, but. Uh, say something else. Something else. Oh yeah, you're you're. I'm gonna talk for a little while. See what you need to do. As far as I don't know, un, I don't know. Isn't there something with your microphone? You have to un, just unplug the mic and plug it back in, or something. Maybe. Um, so uh, it's hold on. Wait, wait. It, is the audience hearing me, Silone? That's the question. It's not you. It's got to be. It's it's up. It's whether the audience is hearing it or not. Uh, sure. Uh, everyone uh, shout out that you hear him and then he'll he'll do what I tell him. Um, anyway, so 
in the show, uh, there's there was parts that, of this about the society that, from what I understand, and you did see the whole thing and read the book, so I'm not telling you what it is, but from what I understand, there's a whole other aspect, and it sounds like cloning is illegal in society, but uh, or extremely expensive, uh, one or the other. But uh, one of the things that the our, our aristocracies or the plutocracy does, like one of the main characters, is he clones himself every 48 hours. And, and, and him and his wife have all these clones of themselves running around, which causes all kinds of problems. And uh, I'm sure is a, is a, can, will end up being a huge plot twist. It already was like a little plot twist. But, you know, um, that kind of thing in and of itself. So if you can implant your consciousness into another body, and if you have a clone of anyone, you could essentially become anyone. Well, I will say this. It's not it's not illegal to do that, what they're doing. It's um, only the rich can do that because they're the right. only ones that can afford it. What is illegal is what they call double sleeving when you make two copies. So when you download yourself and then download yourself again at the same time, you can't at have two same of you running damn around. Time. Right. <laughs> that is illegal. That is highly illegal. Um, but... Uh, uh, no, you can have as many copies of yourself as you want. And and it's totally legal to jump into other bodies. So it's it's totally legal to have a say have them grow a body for you and and genetically modify it some kind of weird way. That's what they call the freak fighters. Uh, there's a there's a competition which happens in the book and the show at some point where they have um, what they call these freak fighters and they're basically genetically and I guess cybernetically or whatever modified bodies that they stick into an arena and they fight each other. It's like like popular sport, and basically people jump into those. They do the fight, and then the thing dies, and then they go back to their own body. So that that is completely legal as well. However, huh. I would imagine it's probably just like anything else. It's probably illegal. It probably illegal. No, it's probably illegal to jump into a body in the for the purpose of misrepresenting who you are. So in other words, if you were to say uh, knock somebody out. You know, tie them up, put them in your basement or whatever, uh, download them for a little while, jump into their body and then go do a crime as them. That would be if they found out it was you, then that would be completely that would not only would the crime be illegal, but the impersonating would be illegal to be an additional crime. I would imagine it's legal to it's legal to clone it and (laughs) it's legal to sleeve it. But if you're the proprietor of a sleeve bar, it is illegal for them to unsleeve you. That's one right that the the police in the <laughs> never mind. Hey, everybody says my sound is good. You're the only one here. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That sucks for me. No, I'm just saying it's not on my end. Is what I'm saying. If it's going into the stream, fine. Then it's something on your end. Yeah. All Sorry, right. buddy. Well, sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh. So what else? What else? Um. Um. Okay, so you you had a uh, ocular oh. augment, augmented reality AR. What's that? Yeah, they, like did you 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 see like they they put the little doohickeys in their eyeballs, and I don't know yes. if they like. To me, it it seemed like the tech is like a daily wear or some like almost like daily contacts or reusable. Or, you know, like what do you call it? Disposable or something? Because like every day she's putting a new one in. Yeah, I didn't catch. I I, I didn't catch. They don't talk about that technology. I mean, they 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 say that they see it, but they don't talk about what it is that causes that. There's like some kind. You're right. It's some kind of ocular something. I don't know if it's an implant or if it's something that they wear or I don't know. Because yeah. I saw him. He puts the thing up to his eye, right? And then all of a sudden, he can yeah. he sees all this like AR stuff, and and he has to have filters to shut out all the commercials. So like, right. if you don't pay for the premium service, you get bombarded with commercials as you're walking down the street. You know, from yeah. the houses, from the houses, from the houses, from Parts. the houses. Stop. <laughs> targeted advertising i mean like because oh, yeah. they they were they they could tell he was a he was brand new sleeve oh yeah. you're brand new in your sleeve come on your your stamina is the best right now come on down yeah. to this whorehouse which yeah, yeah. i must say in the future prostitution is legal not that there's yes. anything wrong with that well you know what's awesome is that they there's 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 live flesh prostitution and then there's you know uh net running style prostitution yeah, yeah. so virtual prostitution so that's something else we haven't talked about there is the whole virtual world you can go into which is as real 
as uh, as the physical to, to yeah. you, and which is cool, and it totally makes sense because if you can transfer your consciousness, then you could totally transfer it into a matrix style uh, environment. I mean, you basically have opened up the matrix. Yeah, I I liked it. I liked the fact that uh, you could go in and you would yeah you would have a choice. You could just you could only do it as if it was um, <laughs> yeah virtual. Sorry. Your mom said musical sleeves. Somebody shoots one of the bodies. Ah, oh, crap! <laughs> You're the odd man out. Right. No sleeve for you. Right. Just sleeve Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So the, there was the AR, right? The augmented reality, which I think in actuality, this virtual reality is going to be so short-lived. I think augmented reality is really what's going to happen in the future. Totally agree. And yeah, um, that and I think they completely ne- and, and here's the thing: like when I when we we're talking about net running and the cyber deck and getting back to say cyberpunk and sort of what what this is envisioning and it's like for me, what this show is is everything that I used to imagine when we were role playing, like everything that when they said, "All right, here's what's happening. You're jacking in, and then so you're seeing what's in the real world, but you're actually in a, a different world. And so in a way, there's like this, I guess, augmented reality that's in, I guess it would be an inverse augmented reality is what the net is when you jack in, which is what cyberpunk is and what this world is. You know what I mean? It's, it's you're jacked in, and you're not real, but everything in the real world exists in there. Right? Makes sense, yeah. <laughs> no, because they build constructs that you go into. They well, they can. You can build a, a, a constructs of, of fake shit in that world too, but you you can have you can. I think just like in remember in Night City and stuff, you could walk around Night City and like oh no, that would be was represented. And- no, that was something that was at. We did that with one of the adventures, and I think John had pulled that from another story. Another uh, when I forget, I think it was like when Gravity Falls or, or fails, when Gravity Fails or something like that. That was from another storyline yeah. that he just pulled in. And he imported it. It's a cool concept, you know. I mean, why yeah. not? Why not overlay the you know build a virtual world at one to one scale of our world and have it interact with the virtual world so right, that right. you could you could kind of do both. Like you you could go out for an evening. In the virtual world, but kind of be in the real world and interact with real people because then they could see you through their AR, right. but you're there virtually. See, you're, so you're there, but you're not there. But they see you because you're not because you are there and not there at the same time. So you could literally virtually go hang out with real people. Like, right. I could really be at the bar drinking, and you're virtually there at the bar drinking with me. But you're drinking virtually. So when I wake up in the morning, I am hurting. You wake up in the morning, you're fine. Well, I want a virtual hangover. I'm sure they could do that with the right drugs. Well, hey, maybe, yes. uh, maybe you have a, an injector in your house, so as you take a drink at the bar, it like manually like signals Ooh, back and injects yeah. you with, I don't know, maybe alcohol, maybe you got an IV or something. Yeah. Maybe I get all buttered up. <laughs> get all buttered. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> all right. Be, so, what, yeah. what were some other technology that you remember from the show? Because there was one that I I, I see I I remember seeing and. It also was a uh, you know because yeah we did sort of homogenize but who doesn't homogenize some of their gaming you know from yeah, game sure, to sure. game but right. it was remember the the dude who ran that uh, that fight place and he's like he's got like the his face was like boop, boop, boop. he could like sh- shift change change he like, was a uh, synthetic shape shift his face so he, he was he was a he, he was a synthetic so he is uh, uh, his body he's a ro- basically in a robot body. Oh, so yeah, he's like full cyborgy kind of a yeah. thing or whatever we used to call it. He's a straight up full full Borg. Okay. So his brain that was, is just yeah. yeah. And then there um, was the, there was the enhanced enhanced uh something enhanced bio something that the the main character has uh Kovacs. He remember yeah, he's he, like uh, uh by oh, sh- oh sh- crap uh Kim uh Kim something Kim. <sighs> yeah, it's it's like. He basically has like, um, what did they call it in? Uh, I think it, I think it was something called uh, Neuroweave right. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, something faster like reaction times and uh, basically his whole like body a, is wired to be faster. He's got a cyber, some yeah. kind of chem bio right. cyber implanty thing that they don't really explain it. They just yeah. said the, the that it makes him faster and stuff. <laughs> well, he, and remember that 
remember that uh that dude who had the whatever it was like Dr. Octopussy thing on his back? Octopussy. Yeah, yeah. That was not supposed to go. It was like an exo- there was like an exoskeleton type of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was some other tech. I'm just like pointing out different tech that we that well, I remember saying. What, anything else? So so this is where we get away from cyberpunk. So we said this is cyberpunk, right? But it's also not yeah. cyberpunk. It's also just straight up fucking space sci-fi. They yeah. He comes from Harlan's world, which is like 180 light years away, and he comes on this thing called a needle cast, and it um, it can basically talk th- with needle cast. You can you can transfer information anywhere in the universe instantaneously. So it's um, it's they they have this subspace signaling thing that they can transfer people. So the the, the basic concept of this whole the, the reason why there's a stack, which is where you store your consciousness. Uh, why you're able to store your consciousness and transfer it and everything was because what they would do is, is they would send spaceships out and it would take spaceships on, you know, however long to get where they're going and they would travel at near light right. speed. So these ships would get, you know, a ship would go to Harlan's world and they would start building a colony. And then they would, I guess, vat grow bodies or, or take them out of uh, storage and, and, you know, start, um, you know, start growing them. Maybe they were frozen embryos or whatever. And then that? they would, what? <laughs> right. And that, then they that? would, they would, uh, you could needle cast people into those bodies to and from. Wow. <laughs> so that's how people would go to like Carlin's world or come back or whatever. You, you'd still need the time to set up the colony, but once it was set up, you could, people could travel to and from it all the time, anyone, anytime they wanted to. Damn, that's yeah. pretty wild. That's pretty cool. And they had, they, of course they had anti-gravity and artificial gravity because you see, you know, ships just floating in air and, um, there, there's a place called the houses, which are these um, these floating base whorehouses, right? And they just float all the time. They just they're just up there. Um, so there, so there is a a whole like like I mean, it's like Star Trek level technology in some ways. Now, in the book, they didn't do this in the show. And again, it's not a spot. This is not a plot spoiler. This is just tech. In the sh- in the book, they actually had like blasters and like laser guns and stuff. He had real guns, like bullet type style guns, but he also had like he had a um, he had this. I think it was called a. Pl- I think they're called a plasma gun. But he basically would melt the head off of people and burn them down to their stack. So he <laughs> would like if he wanted to true death you or re- they called RDing or right. real deathing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, once he killed somebody, he would then walk around and then just melt their head off down to their neck and just melt their stack and destroy them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In the book, it was really nasty. He cuts one person in half with one. Like it's because it's like a beam. He has a beam laser and he like literally just okay. and, cut and and slices the person from from down on their side all the way up to their other side and through their shoulder and they basically fall into two parts. It's oh, he had a lightsaber. And and it, and he said, you know, it wasn't like well, it was nastier than a lightsaber because it wasn't just a cut. There was like blood splatting everywhere and bubbling out. You know, it was like because it's heat. You know, it's right, like right. being hit with a high powered microwave laser, and it would just literally like burn people apart. Um, so so the, that technology was a little different. Um, yeah. So so there's there's oh. uh, there's that. It's it's a it's a sci-fi movie, but has cyberpunk feel and detective oh. noir built into oh, it. Oh yes, the noir yeah. the, the the noir part really is done well too. Yes. Um I got to say the storyline is progressing well for me being halfway through um for sure. I also found out that it does, definitely is taking place in San Francisco. I don't know yes. if anyone else picked up on that. Yeah. Um like the entire um San Francisco Bay Bridge has become what do they call those things? Those colonies where there's just nothing but little um stacked houses you yeah, know what i mean right <laughs> like yeah it's it's basically storage containers it's stacked yeah. on top of each other yeah and um what else uh oh uh, something of, of note uh one of the characters and and david pointed out too is poe there's like an edgar Allan poe kind of uh ai who's in there oh that's a change that from the book isn't that interesting too though that it's kind of like oh yeah as a half thought yeah, yeah ai's here yeah, they didn't take over the world as a matter of fact yeah. eh, Nobody even likes AIs. They're so right. they're so pussy. They Fuck AIs. Yeah. Right. They don't AIs don't get us as humans. Well, the, well, that's because all right. So so in the in the book they they take the premise that AI is never able to 
uh, reprogram itself. So it is tied to its programming. So it can't do stuff that's not in its core programming, and it can't change its core programming. So when they made AI, they could set certain things into the core programming that would keep the AI from taking over the because it couldn't take over the world. So like they can't. They can't like like he was asking he asked Poe to do a bunch of stuff in the show and Poe's like I can't do that that's out of my programming or whatever. Yeah, but, but then it's, he gave he gave him like uh, a high level or he had, gave him the ability like hey I need you to be able to do this and he's like he's like okay can you do it he's like I can now <laughs> like well, a was, little Matrix version little Matrix moment there, there was there was but he wasn't rewriting his core program it didn't go against his core programming so right. it's like oh, I yeah, can't sure. do that but I I could there's nothing to stop me from doing it and then if he could. If he could logic him out of certain core programming things, like if he could logic his way out of it, he could get he could get around it. Like like the AIs can still kind of like, well, it doesn't say I can't do that in particular, or it says, or my core, core programming says I have to help you, and to help you would mean I have to do this, but I can't break any laws. So if I do this other thing. I'm not actually breaking that law, and I'm helping right. you. Right? It's like his whole like he goes through this whole thing, and he figures out that he, he figures out how to do it. Um, so, um, I guess though, if you think about it, an AI of an, an accurate AI of Edgar Allan Poe, who would be more of a, you know, human, just fascinated with human misery and strife, and and I guess this life in and of itself, fascinated by life and and um what makes people tick i guess uh and also could care less about death <laughs> it's like you know like that personality of poe like could would fit you know what i mean to to be an ai that would be more interactable as opposed to other, some other ai with that different programming so what they change in the book uh, from the book with with poe in particular is that in the book he's it the hotel is the hendrix so oh, it's okay. it's Jimi Hendrix, but he doesn't appear as Jimi Hendrix. He doesn't ever take on a visual appearance. He literally in in the in the book he's literally just an AI. There's no physical representation of him. So um, he he helps him out with things, but there's no um, there's no actual like physical representation of him at all. I gotta say, I mean, I, I'll have to read the book for sure, but I gotta say the whole Poe thing, it's a, it was a good switch then, you know. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yep. What else? Any any other tech or anything you get, you're get you getting? Vibe? Uh, interesting? So let's talk about the stack real quick. Um, so we talked about Marsh and stuff. So the stack comes now in the show, they do something a little different with it. Um, but basically, in the book, the stack came from the Martians, right? That was mm -hmm. something the Martians. And I don't know if they're originally from Mars. So it doesn't say where they're originally from, whether it is from Mars or Mars is one of their colonies. Because all these worlds that they go to were given to them by this alien race. They found it in their records or whatever. So they mm -hmm. discovered these worlds, records of, of maps to these worlds. Uh, and the, and the, the stack ability and the metal that they make that thing out of is actually an extraterrestrial metal. So I don't I don't know if they can actually make more or they figured out how to make more or or they have a giant stockpile of them that they use or or I don't know how any of that works. Um, but apparently the, the the thing is they said that they didn't even know this alien society existed on Mars until they started digging down into it. It was basically the surface of Mars was was burying all of it, and there. They said there were some features on Mars that uh, we discovered once we were able to put boots on the ground and start digging around that were actually hiding things. So they don't really go into the face on Mars. He kind of alludes to the face on Mars, which is kind of like I was kind of like, eh. but uh, you know, because because we've seen once you get better pictures of it, it doesn't look like a face at all, <laughs> right? But but anyway, whatever. So. Um, yeah, once we started digging around, we found out, oh, crap, there was all this stuff. There was a whole society on Mars that lived here and and, um, uh, and and on these other worlds and stuff. And so in the show, they're going to take a different direction with the stack, and I'm not going to spoil that. Uh, mm. But but I did not like the direction they took with it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I, it's okay. I don't hate it. I just I prefer – I just kind of prefer it being – how it was described in the book. I thought that was a better way to tell the story. I think the way they are going with talking about the stack is more of a Hollywoodism. It's uh, 
the only complaint about how I have about the show really is the, the Hollywoodification they did to some of it. Like some of the story elements are just like typical Hollywood tropes. And I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, okay. You had to throw that trope in there. All right. Whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Is, is it something that would preclude them if they went with the book that would preclude them from having a second or third season or something or nope. Wouldn't oh, have changed okay. anything. All right. Well, I, I definitely hope, even just being halfway through, I definitely hope that there is uh, more seasons of this, which it sounds like there there is, because there's three books, evidently, um, in this series. Yeah. So, yeah. I've only gotten through the first book, so I don't know. Yeah. But I, I don't see how it could... Ch- I don't No, you could still have... It still would not have taken any of that away. It's just some of the characters, they changed around their roles, mm-hmm. right? Um, one of the main... I'm not going to say anything about who or what they changed, but there is a main character change that I really disliked the change. I felt like, and you won't even notice it. It won't affect you at all. You'll still enjoy the show. But but once you read the book, you're going to go, oh, yeah, right. This would have been better. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like they, they changed something and made it not better because it's, it's you'll, you'll see. You'll go, you'll go, oh, yeah, Hollywood. Good job, Hollywood. You did the Hollywood thing. Uh, didn't ruin I mean- it. Doesn't ruin it, but it would have been better if he had done it the other way. Just would have been better. Right. Okay. That's all. All right. Mm-hmm. That's all. I'm not a hater. Not a hater. Not hating. Uh-huh. All right. So you want to talk about the characters real quick before we go? Uh, before we move on to the game? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh wait. Oh, one more uh, thing. I'm sorry. Sorry. Before talking about the character, oh, oh. one more thing. Uh, one of the things that I read online after the, the book and the movie or the show um, was talking about the 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 sex and then you know all the nudity and the and the, the the drug use and all the craziness that people were like seemed to be very predominant in society. And they were saying how that was done on purpose because um, people when they have a body that can survive death. They are a little more carefree with things. They're not as worried about mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Um, but another thing happened, and and they talk about it. They didn't. They showed it in the in the show, but they didn't talk about it in the show. So they talked about it in the book and showed it. You know what I mean? So they kind of went into it in a little bit in depth in the book. Um, Earth has become. It's. It's. I can't remember. I don't want to go into the details of, and I can't really remember exactly. But Earth has become a little bit prudish. And it's done that thing that we have kind of in America where sex sells and there's sex everywhere and people love to talk about sex and stuff, but they don't like to admit that they love sex and talk about sex. And so there's this Uh-oh. this weird social layer um, and it play heavily into uh, Bancroft's character. It plays very heavily into why he does the things he does. So when you're watching the show or reading the book, remember uh, Bancroft lives in a society where – they are even a little more prudish than we are in America on the surface, but much more uh, liberated underneath than most people are. And it's, right. it's sort of like it's sort of like you see people like Dan Blazarian who who goes around and he, and he puts pictures on Instagram of him laying with like five and six and seven women. Well, on the earth now in the, the altered carbon world, if you're one of the what they call the meths, those people that can live forever. Uh, Which stands for Methuselah. Methuselah, right? Exactly. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that in your position, but you want to because you have all the money and the power. So they all really kind of do. So they all right. do it, but they can't talk about it or show it or let anyone know about it. So that that plays really heavily into the storyline. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Kind of like uh, you know, seventeen, seven, you know, late seventeenth century. Uh, Oh sure, uh, uh, Purit- Puritans and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You had, yeah, you had all the the nobility, right? All the rich people running around doing all this fucked up shit that they couldn't talk about, right? To anyone, can you let anyone know? And if anybody found out by accident, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he's there, a witch. He's a witch. It, it plays into that very heavily. The show, the yeah. show, and the book both play into that. So those those are core concepts of the the, the storyline. Yeah, man. All right, that's good. I, uh, I I highly suggest anyone to, uh, if you are the least bit interested in uh, cyberpunk or you know loved anything about um, Blade Runner and gosh, what else? I mean, there's so many. You know, I Robot. If you liked any of the books then uh, or movies, then this is definitely a show for you, and I highly highly recommend it. You know? Don't watch it with your kids. No. No. 
No. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no, no. Well, uh, at, at what age? I, mean, I, I can't watch it with my uh, 14, teenagers. 15 year old. Yeah, you can yeah. do fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. I mean, if you're comfortable you're with your gonna, kid, you're, you're comfortable not gonna with your sit kids. Down with, you're going to sit down with London and go, "Come Dude, on, honey, come on." It's, look. it's this shy of porn. Yeah, it, it, there okay. are times. Yes, yeah. It's it's basically softcore porn in in some of the scenes. In some of the scenes. Yes, I'm just saying. I just want to put that out there in case somebody's watching this and we've suggested it. You know, I'm not suggesting you watch this with with anyone who's emotionally under the age of say 15, right? So, like, uh, if you have a thirteen-year-old kid, oh, but, emotionally, yeah, and they're mentally, emotionally fit, I'm a little and, under the age. If they're, right, if they're they're kind of emotionally <laughs> and mentally, if if you're like, ah, oh, they've seen that kind of stuff before, they're fine with it, then fine, whatever. But you know, I know some like seventeen-year-olds to be like, oh, it's too much. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. It's funny you say that because it's like again, and it's a double standard. But you know, there is a certain amount of uncomfortability because there's a lot of swinging penises too. Oh, and, yeah. You know, as a, as oh, a male, yeah. I'm sitting and I'm like, oh, but it's I, like, and, and I, I literally was trying to desensitize myself to that because it's like I, I shouldn't be feeling that. Way. Why should I? Why? Well, then I realized, oh, it's misplaced jealousy and envy. Yeah, right. Eh, that's OK. Not that there's anything yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, because that dude. Oh, my God. The one dude walks out and I'm just I <laughs> dude, I, dude, I <laughs> right. I, I'm going to I'm going to sell myself out here. I'm putting myself out here. <laughs> Stop. Put it out there. Rewind, oh play God. again. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> I did. I checked his junk out. I was like, "Damn!" Yeah, I'll bet you my mom did that too. That's why I can't watch it with her. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the. Oh, she said meat market. I bet the um, the uh, sausage fest. I can guarantee you that actor was just like, "Yeah, I'm good with walking out naked." Yeah, I'd like yeah. to. Yeah. Matter of fact, I. I want that in my contract. I want to. I want to walk out naked because you uh, know, not not bragging, not bragging. I, I, I would hope that it was part of the casting call and yeah, and not like uh, you know he got CGI'd. Oh, wouldn't that be messed up if you find out that you were CGI'd? Oh. Yeah, that'd be disappointing. It's like uh, I want to be in this movie. Okay, um, are you yeah. uh, bigger than a water bottle? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, it wouldn't be our show if we didn't go down this road, right? <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So, do you want to touch all on? Right. Got, we're running out of time. We're touching the characters so, at all. Do you really want to talk about the characters at all? Do we need to? Nah, let's just no. Nah, we're, we're 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 done. I mean, you know, yeah. there's uh, we, no. We're good. <laughs> All right, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to put the uh, – so everybody go watch Alter Carbon. It's awesome. Read the book. Read the book. The book's really good too. Um, yeah. They're both good. And I did I did this thing that I'll never do again. Don't do this thing. Uh, don't do them at the same time. So I started reading the book and then the show – because because the show was coming out. I'm like, oh, I always wanted to read that book. And then I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do it now. i got to credit. I'm going to listen. Oh. Uh, you know. So I did it and I got about halfway through the book and then the show started. And I was like, hey, I've never done this before. <laughs> I've never done them at the same time. I wonder what that's like. Yeah, it sucks. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> no, I, I agree because yeah. even being further away from a book, like I watched all of the, um, what the Mockingbird stuff. What the hell was it? You know, um, oh my God. Why am I not thinking of the story? Um, anyway, yeah, forget it. Okay. We ready to play this game. <laughs> all right. So how are we doing this? You're, you're going to be the game master, right? So I'm just going to keep the camera on you. And uh, it's gonna be a little different this time because when I switch over, uh, you got. You Tell me when you're that. done doing this and yeah. this. And All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Mythwits and uh, game time with the Mythwits. Today we are going to play a game called "Is This a Real Role Playing Game or Not a Real Role Playing Game?" Oh, you bastard! Okay. So basically, Peter and I, Peter, I will read to you the name of a role-playing game. Your job will be to tell me whether or not this game actually exists according to Ranker.com's top 200 best tabletop pen and pencil RPGs of all time or a completely BS made up name that I and a cohort of mine has made up. Right, so so I had help. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. This, so anyone watching, this could be a game, even if Mike doesn't have it, because there are a million, could be a zillion games out there, right? But it's a game that is so non-significant 
If it is real, it did not make the top 200. So, well, fair enough. Actually, Ranker goes beyond 200, but I stuck to 200 because I think, well, that's fair. And I did not, you know, scrape the bottom of the barrel either. I went, right. you know, you have ones as, as high as 30 on here too. But uh, I went all over the list, but I, I, I'm letting you know that according to popular votes uh, on Ranker, that uh, these are, you know, real and they okay. are within the 200 fair enough and I even good. even the, my even my fake ones i i searched the list in, t in its entirety and they don't exist so all right all let's do right. it let's do it all right <clears throat> for number one and there are 10 oh by the way you are playing your playing with yourself and against playing yourself myself, tonight so yeah. your job will be to beat yourself by 50 percent. so if you can do better than 50 percent, which i believe you can as a matter of fact i'm gonna go on a spread i win if you do better than 65 percent. all right okay all right so we're you're you're betting that i will be able to beat myself live on air yes beat yourself 65 percent. whereas i'm only requiring you to be a wiener to beat yourself by 50 percent. Okay, you only you. have to get five out of these 10. gotcha all right all right so either right or wrong so your first one okay numenera Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Monty Numenera. Cook. All right. Numenera is at number 30. So I had a feeling you might get that one. Yeah. So probably. Numenera is, in fact. One of the top selling Kickstarters of all time for role playing games. Of course it is. <laughs> all right. Of course, of course you know that. Right. All right. Here we go. Number two. Okay. okay. After the plague. After the plague. The plague. I know there's After the Bomb, which was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle book. Um, after, the play, after the Play could be one. Uh, fuck, I, I want to say yes, but After the Plague, After the Plague. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say you changed Bomb to Plague. Well, I did not change Bomb to Plague. However, I did make up After the Plague out of whole cloth. Or... I did use an, uh, a book number, a book generator. <laughs> so it, it came up with After the Plague. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. That's two right. Oh. All right. Two right. Very good. All right. Number three, Peter, Spirit of the Century. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, played that on Game School, I think, or, or a version mm -hmm. of Spirit of the Century. Uh, yes, that is a game. All right, you are correct, sir. Coming in at 125, Spirit of the Century. I tell you, somebody was like, oh, are you sure you need to give him 200? It's like, oh, yes, yes. 200 <laughs> is probably too kind. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's, he's a, you're a role-playing savant, I swear. Okay, number four, Metamorphosis Alpha. Hmm. Yes. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis Alpha. Alpha was one of the very first space games ever made. Uh, it was made. Um, I think Jim Wampler worked on that. Um, they did a Kickstarter for it recently, uh, and I think it's part of the. the oh God, I want to say it's part of the DCC group, but I can't remember totally. But yes, Metamorphosis Alpha is definitely a game. Okay, well, you are correct. I mean, for shit's sake, anything else you'd like to say about it? Maybe do you yes. know the ISBN number, for God's sakes? As a matter of fact, Metamorphosis Alpha is where my favorite module, uh, uh, Escape from the Barrier Peaks, uh, was originated from. It was actually, I think it was one of the ships from that universe that crash-landed in the D&D &D world. Number five. <laughs> Fuck's sake. DC Powers. I don't know if you see what I did there, DC or what no. somebody did there. No, no, it's DC. It's uh, no. There's no. I don't think there's any game called DC Powers, particularly that exact name. Uh, you sure? I'm not 100 percent sure on this one, but I don't recall anything ever being called DC Powers. So your final answer is DC Powers is not a game. Correct. DC Powers is in fact not a game, you fucker. Yes, Sweet. there was DC Heroes, but yes. you know, I 
just thought it'd be kind of cute to say DC power. <laughs> right. Anyway. Oh, right. Cause right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So number, well, you've already beaten yourself. <laughs> you've already beaten Everybody your, beat myself on air live. Beating yourself. All right. So, uh, but uh, let's see, here we go. Number six. Esso terrorists. Esso terrorists. Esso terrorists. Two hundred games. Two hundred. So terrorists. See, I could see that being the title of a game. I could. I have never heard of that game. Which doesn't mean it doesn't exist for sure. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with my gut and say no. That is not a game. Peter, Esoterrorists came in at number 195. That is oh. the lowest that I scraped the barrel, but I figured I had to at least <laughs> go low. So Esoterrorist <laughs> is in fact a game. I don't feel so bad about getting that one wrong. You had to go that low. Ah, you're such a moron. You're so stupid. You couldn't even get esoteric. Right? What a moron. Hey, whoever created esoteric, sorry. Sorry. You suck. I'm sure you're watching this show. All right. Go ahead, Mike. All, right. All right. Here we go. Uh, well, I don't know. People at the bottom of the barrel tend to stick together. No, anyway, That's here we true. go. Okay. Right. Your number seven is Redemption. Redemption. That's got to be a game. I've never played it. I, I've never played it, but that, that's got to be a game. And Redemption is, in fact, not a game. Really? Motherfucker. Not a game. Redemption. Hey, everybody. Hey, anyone out there? That's a good game title for a game. You should make a game called Redemption. It's I, That I, would be fantastic. I, I swear to God, I searched the list. If anyone's interested, there is no game club now there's a dead red redemption oh yeah but that's a video game yeah yeah now and and that's why i thought let me go with redemption as, a, as its own name that's, that that's might, a good like, one uh, yeah good that one. might uh, what do you call it um what is that what is that called or Damn, you know, be, I, that would be a cool mechanic the redemption engine put that in your game uh ooh, some kind of mechanic yeah. that you would put in there you know like something's going wrong or you've done something fucked up and you need to redeem yourself and you get points for it or something that that's a good that's a good game thing all right mike next Mandela effect. That's what I was trying to think of. Anyway, here we go. Number, let's see. This is number. God, I'm so glad you aren't asking me if that's a game. <laughs> All right, eight. Number eight is Roll Master. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a whole system. Roll Master. Yep, that's a whole system. Is it was made by Roll Ice. Roll Master a game or not a game? It's, well, it's. It's kind of. I'm gonna say yes. It's a product put out by ICE uh, back in the day. It had these chart, these really cool charts. So you would take damage, you roll this chart, and it depend on the damage and the the situation. But you could like be spun around with your head crushed. Like you didn't really have hit points. You just died or lived off this chart. Roll master. Yes, roll master. <laughs> Just messing with you. Yeah, it's a game, you bastard. And that that did came in come in at number forty seven. So mm -hmm. I played a fuck ton of Rollmaster, dude. They had the uh, they were the first ones to have the Lord of the Rings property, and we played a ton of Lord of the Rings using the Rollmaster system. It was pretty cool. So the way you're describing it, it, it sounds like it was also much like what is that game that we played where I played JD and it was the the circle chart and where we'd roll to hit. Uh, no, no, that, uh, no, that was different. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that was uh, that was Millennium's End. Um, Millennium's End, right? No, no, this was literally a chart, and you didn't have hit points. the The chart determined. I don't think you had hit points. Maybe you did, but the chart would determine like whether you died. Like if you got electrocuted, you you'd roll, and you'd go on this chart, and you'd you'd go over and down. You compared, I guess, to your body size, or maybe it was your hit point size, or whatever. It's been a long time since I played, but you would go down and it could be like, uh, you were fried to a crisp and turned to a pile of dust. I mean, we love just looking at the chart. The chart was funny. You know, hmm. uh, if you fumbled, you could like be ejected. Like you're, if you fumbled your horse roll, horse riding roll, you could be ejected from your horse and land head first into a tree and squirrels eat your brain or some, some dumb shit like that. I don't know. It was, it was funny, but yeah, that was roll master. Sorry. Sorry. We're spending too much time on this. Laugh a minute. <laughs> okay. Your next, your next game. <laughs> That obviously must or must not exist is metal to metal. Now, I'm going to give you how it is spelled. Okay. okay. It is metal, M E T A L, 
right. two T O M E T T L E metal to metal. Mm, okay. So in other words, it's like willpower metal. There's, there's metal like, like, Hmm. Metal to metal. And you spelled it for me. I've never heard of it. I'm going to say it's not a game. I'm going to say you made it up. Mm. The old anecdotal is your data, huh? Metal to metal is not a game. Nice. But it should be a game, shouldn't it? That's a good. That's a good title, dude. I gotta hand it to you. Title. That would be a fucking. That would be a great like Car Wars title, like a uh, yeah. Car Wars supplement, or maybe even like a a game that 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 would be like Car Wars. You know, like instead of pedal to the metal, it's metal to the metal. Yeah. There you go. Right. Anyway, so. Um. Yeah, I was like, should I do it metal to metal, metal to the metal? Yeah, I, I was. I was playing around <laughs> with it. Good. That's but. Good. Um, Good, yeah, what's name. funny is, you know, with role-playing games, there's a whole genre of camp, and there's a whole genre of super serious, yeah. so it, 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 it's a whole continuum, so that's what makes this it, game great. That right? would even be a great module for, for a game if you if you just could figure out what to do the metal to metal, like even like a D&D right. mod, that'd be a great D&D module, uh, right. you know, metal to metal, you know, fantastic, yeah. All right? Yeah. All those metal uh, chromatic dragons, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right, Tim? All right, right. Tim? Uh, number, uh, t- Timmy? Number what? 10. <laughs> Timmy? What? <laughs> number number 10. Okay. Is Elric of Melibone. Yes, totally. Elric of Melibone. Which was a different, which was basically a newer version of the original game Stormbringer. Jesus fucking Christ. Yes, coming in at 100. 100 <laughs> is Elric of Melibon. It might even be made by K. I think that one was made by Chaos- Chaosium, but I'm not sure. I, I, you know what? You did good, kid. You did good. I, did. I didn't doubt that, you, that you'd that you even, you know, beat my spread. So we're both winners in this. Uh, Wait, you win and I win. You beat yourself and you beat my spread. So, um, so does that mean I get to do this? Wait. Oh shit! Hold on. Sure. I can't hold on. Wait, wait. Sure. <laughs> I forgot you, to you do this. Do I, I, I can do it too. <laughs> I didn't think. Hold on. I didn't set this up because you know we were doing something different with the game, and I it's said, fine. "Do we need any it's sounds?" Fine. And yeah, right. Whatever. Okay. Sure. Sure, Pete. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> now I can do it. Hey, everybody. Look at me. I'm smart. And then wait a minute, Mike. Mike, you're a winner too. Good game, man. Good game. Give me a wave. Hey, high five. High five. Boom. <laughs> all right. All right. Hold on. So, yep. All right. You know what? I, I, I'm going to prepare another game for you like this sometime, you know, uh, because like I, I told you when we do our shows through February or through the rest of no, no, February, March, right? You're going to be running your Kickstarter. Yeah. And, you know, as, as a means for me to be somewhat of a help, <laughs> I'd like to, uh, you know, I'll take over some games. If you have any ideas or want me to do something, you can certainly do me do me some assignments but uh okay. you know even if we don't do the big production or whatever it's right. fine right? right i think we just can't do is, ones with just... sound bites unless right. you get your sound working which <laughs> it's, it's easier for you if i don't right wait a minute Hold on. i forgot to i haven't put this away yet it's still here so right that's this right here. yeah 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 you're right let's do it the dumbest way possible dumbest way possible it's easier for you Right, right. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, uh, Pondy Strong, Team Pondy, Fuck Cancer. Go check out uh, um, Scott Pond on Facebook. I, does he have a? Does he have like a store or something? Hold on. He's like our invisible, like like uh, honored guest, I guess. I don't know. Right. You know what? I say we have him on the show sometimes. We've talked about it. We have to. Yeah. You know what? Let me contact him. Um, yeah. And, and get him on the show because he does like a lot of artwork and stuff. Yeah, he's scottpond.com. Go to scottpond.com. Uh, tell him the Mythwits sent you. And, uh, and and he's got like a bunch of stuff, really cool shirts and stuff. You can uh, you can find all the Scott Sigler stuff, really good books, fantastic books. Um, 
and uh, he does design stuff. So he he's an art. If you're looking for an artist, on uh, someone who does like design work, like logo designs and book covers and stuff, this dude is fantastic. He is off the chain. He's really good and super nice. I mean, super super nice yes. guy. Like yes. you could not give your money to a better person. Really, seriously, he's a good dude. Real good dude. All right, everybody. Uh, that's it. I'm going to run the closey closer. And uh, wait a minute. I got to get down to the notes, y'all. All right, everybody. Uh -huh. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Even when we don't have a show, we'll make shit up. Please ask our guests questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. Uh, if you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. And hey, if you're in the chat room, we'll talk about you. We talked about Mama Marsh tonight. We talk Hey, Jen stopped by. I saw that. David Benavides was hanging out with us. Um... Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Or you can listen at Mythwits.podbean.com. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love. Mythwits. Mythwits love over the entire planet. I keep getting them mixed up. Um, Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. And hey, Game School, I've got my hosts. And I've got an editor and everything. Game School's coming back probably June. Looking forward, maybe. Um, Mythwits is is a Creative Commons product, like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't put it into a stack and um, send it via Needlecast anywhere. Uh, make sure to check out 27.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks everybody for listening. Tell your friends to tune in and until next week. Look, nothing up my sleeve. Oh, I get it. Sleeve, because the s sleeve, right? <laughs>